is up, everybody? We have a unique episode today where we're missing our baby goat, Suikar. So the old head goat and the other goat are going to have to kind of carry this one uh, to the finish line. Uh, it's a jam-packed episode today. It's episode 83, week nine preview episode. So we're going to give you, uh, we're going to be giving you a lot of uh, ammo on how to take control of your league. And this week, it's a very crucial week. Show it. What do you think? Week nine. Um, where should you be right now? Where, where should you, your mind be at? How are you attacking this week? Yeah, your mind should be looking at all of the players that are injured and picking up players that are not there. Jonathan Taylor is out. If Deion Jackson is available, you need to go and be cognizant of all the people that are being dropped. Look at that. Don't sleep. Just keep looking at your uh, free agents list and see if you can get your teams to be that better. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm even noticing there's a lot of players that haven't even been picked up till this moment, and I can't pick them up because I already picked up all these other backups on my league. So I'm just, like, sitting here, like, crossing fingers, wa- watching, like, these injuries happen. And if some of my starters are out for sure, then I can put them on the injured reserve and maybe pick one more backup that really won't do anything. But just in case they do something, uh, I'm picking them up and putting them on my roster. Um, that being that being said, um, let's go ahead and start our water cooler talk. Water cooler talk, starting off with a Thursday night football recap. Um, Eagles visited the Texans, and man, it was a manslaughter at the at the end of this game. Beginning of the game, it started off like, "Whoa, what is this Texans team? What are they doing that these other teams have not been doing? How are they putting the Eagles on edge?" Uh, but the final score ended up being 29 to 17. Eagles did what Eagles do. Eagles are now 18 and 0. Houston is 1 6 and 1. Um, this game was basically Eagles just kind of controlling the ball and just playing along to uh, what they're meant to play with and not going outside of their box and trying to do too much. And that, you know, you can just. Uh, you can try to do too much against a bad team and kind of going on a downward slope, but they didn't do that. They just maintained their game. And even though it was a close game early on, they just kind of held on to their uh, strong players and uh, targeted all their best weapons. And at the end of the game, after four um, quarters of football, it resulted how it was supposed to result. Um, Hurts doing Hurts things, 243 yards passing, two touchdowns, nine rushes for 23 yards. His rushing attempts have lowered a little bit, but he has become a solid, solid passer in the meantime, he's up there with everybody else that we mentioned all the uh, all the weeks about how good they are at passing the football. He's there now, which is incredible because now he has the running upside and the passing upside. And we're we're at Josh Allen territory um, if we're not talking about the volume from the passing game. Without the volume, we're right there with Josh Allen. Goddard surprisingly at the half wasn't doing too hot. I was kind of excited. I'm like, wow, he's throwing to Goddard a lot, but it's not anywhere near him. However, they fixed that at halftime. Ended up with eight catches for 100 yards and a touchdown. AJ Brown, you know, even though he didn't have a big monster game like he did last week, still showed up strongly on the stat sheet. Four catches for 59 yards and a touchdown. And Pierce, man, Pierce is the real deal show. That guy is amazing. He's looking like somebody that you could wake up one Sunday and notice the new record being broken um, because he's playing for such a bad team where you know they're just going to run all day and he's still running for his life. He's got some Marshawn Lynch vibes going on. 27 rushes for 139 yards. And what's funny is him compared to Gainwell, they were like one point off because of the whole yeah. PPR thing. It's so sad. We need to have – this is exactly why um, leagues are more fun when you have, um, you know, certain uh, – like if you cross the 120 mark, you get an extra yeah. three points. Bonus points. Yeah. Bonus points. I, I think it would make things so much more fun. Um, we should probably look into that next year. Um Eagles, you know, are they going to lose this year? I don't know. I, I don't think they are. That's a weird thing to say this early, but injuries can happen at any moment. Jalen Hurts goes down, they can easily lose all of their games. So they have a little shot to go 17-0. Um, I'm not going to sit here and stop predicting when their first loss is going to be. It's a futile situation. It's just going to happen when it happens. And uh, if you look at that schedule, there is no team right now that is better than the Eagles. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I was looking at their schedule and it's a very favorable matchup. I think the Packers and the Cowboys uh-huh. are like the really biggest struggle and not even the Packers until they come turn around the yeah. season. Uh, but yeah, it's looking like it's definitely a possibility. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a hard, it's a tough league. So doing that yeah. 17 games in a row, it's going to be, it's not going to be easy for sure. Absolutely. I'm going to wear my Cowboys hat, which I don't have uh, that day for sure. Um, so Dolphins paid Bradley Chubb a defensive uh, conversation here for five years, 110 mil extension. I'm not sure why they did that. I'm, I have a biased opinion on that. He, he's a good player, but I mean, 
a foundation to a defense. He's kind of getting old. There's there's better options out there. Um, but you know what? They're in a win now mode. So props to them. Um, Deshaun, Jack, uh, Deshaun Washington is now going to start against Houston when he's el eligible to return. That's just something I felt like we need to kind of bring up. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's how well it's going to go. I'm not, I'm not going to be picking up Watson and stashing him because that's late into the season. You should already have a startable quarterback by then that you're com very comfortable with if you're trying to win any sort of fantasy championship. Um, but trade baits uh, could happen if you're in a league that allows trades late into the season. Um, but right now, just something to talk about people that don't have a starting quarterback, they're not happy with and something to look out for or something to stash in your lineups. Early. Yeah, people, people like Russell Wilson owners, people like Tom Brady owners could look at Deshaun Watson and say maybe he could give yeah. them a little bit more upside. Absolutely. Now let's jump into injuries. Oh, my leg. Show it. I got a lot of injuries to tell you about, but we're going to focus on the top uh, ones that matter. Um, so I'm going to run through this rather quickly, but let me know if there's anything you have further questions about or if any other players should be mentioned along with the injury conversation. Michael Thomas is out for season. Surprise. You know, that's that's probably good for Michael Thomas owners. You can clear up that IR space for somebody relevant. Um, on that note, Mark Ingram and Marcus Lattimore are out again. Um, so Camaro owners, you were never debating this in the first place, but now um, you're not going to have to worry about those catches that Mark Ingram is going to take. Uh, Lattimore is out. Uh, we're going to get jump into that a little bit later when we talk about the Saints game. Uh, Rashad Bateman's out for season. Again, same thing. You're probably happier. And you're not happy. Like, I used was sad, but I, I was happy for him if I was in issues. Less thing to worry about with a volatile player rather just talk about somebody like DJ Moore, somebody that is going to be more consistent going forward. Jonathan Taylor out for Sunday. You kind of touched up on this earlier. Deion Jackson jumps into that category of, do you start him or not? We're also going to talk about that later. Um, it's a tougher matchup than Deion Jackson has seen so far. Um, so it's definitely a conversation worth having, but as of right now, you know, most teams with six teams on by uh, Deion Jackson is likely just going to jump into your starting lineup. Chubba Hubbard out on Sunday. Foreman owners, man. You're, you got a little mini Henry. Got a little mini Henry ready to uh, play again this week. Um, Andrews, Mark Andrews, that is, not looking promising by not practicing. But then again, he hadn't practiced last week and kind of ended up playing. Playing, He was limited some days. But um, uh, it's time to stash likely if you're – because this is a Monday game. It's a late game. So you can either pick up another tight end who you're comfortable with um, there's not many of those out there. So if you're not doing that, then you need to stash likely just in case Andrews is likely not going to play. Uh, Gus Edwards, Gus Edwards, same boat, um, probably not going to play. Um, he's questionable as well. Look somewhere else. Uh, Marquise Goodwin, he's out. Why am I mentioning this? Not sure. But DK Metcalf uh, and Lockett will likely play. Um, Goodwin has been doing well when either of those are out. Um, so just keep an eye out if something happens and um, last minute DKs just like really weird knee injury, which makes no sense. It makes no sense to any medical professional. It was supposed to be a patellar tendon injury, which is life like life altering injury, you know, um, mm -hmm. but he, he played the next day and I'm not sure what that maybe he needed to go poop again. I'm, I'm more on the side of he just had to go poop again and it was too embarrassing to go poop two games back to back. So, you know, that's what I'm banking on. Uh, Damian Harris, extremely questionable. Not like you're going to start him anyways, but this just means Ramonde Stevenson, is, you're going to be more confident starting him versus somebody else that you may have been contemplating. Um, if, you're, if you're lucky to be contemplating uh, Ramondre Stevenson versus somebody else right now, then you're probably sitting real pretty or you're in a four-man league or a five-man, six-man league. But um, just letting you know, you, you can be more confident starting Ramondre over somebody else. Keenan Allen, you know, guess what? He's out again. At this point in the season, man, this is why you don't draft him. This is literally why you don't draft him. And it's just our case is just being proven week after week. He's so good. Um, a lot of active wide receivers in the NFL look up to Keenan Allen, like Deontay Johnson. They're all like, Keenan Allen's the best. Keenan Allen's the best. But, you know, maybe maybe Father Time is actually uh, the best. Um, Eckler, uh, abdominal issue, is going to play. There was a little bit of conversation about maybe stashing his back up. Eckler has been prone for injuries for many, many years since he came into the league. So it's always one of those nice backups to stash. You know, you, you don't know which backups to stash. 
Like I see Shota, you don't really care about Leonard Fournette's backup. Um, and that's kind of makes sense, right? He's a big guy. He rarely, do, he doesn't really get injured. Um, so it's one of those like speculative, I right, find I'm just going to bank on his health. But Eckler is not one of those people. And a lot, there's a lot of uh, running backs in the league. Like Dalvin Cook is not one of those people. So you're going to get those two games from their backups um, where they're going to look like starters. Uh, we were hoping that that was going to be this week if you're not an Eckler owner, but it looks like Eckler is going to play. And if he's going to play, he's the best player in fantasy football. So you do not contemplate that. You just start him and forget him. Uh, Ryan yeah, I, just, I, I just grab other people's backups. I don't keep my backups. But I Dude, that is such now. a risky, that is such a risky <laughs> strategy because that's, you know, out of the seven deadly sins, I would, that's gluttony. Yeah. That's gluttony. Just because, guys like, if I had guys like Dalvin Cook, right? Yeah. Uh, or even Eckler, I would definitely stash those. But uh, Najee Harris, Leonard Fournette, uh, they're still kind of – they're pretty strong bodies. So I'll take my chances and get four minute, you know, bench. Oh, for now. God. No, knock on wood right now. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So next up, Ryan Tannehill, questionable against the Chiefs. Not like you're going to start them. Uh, but I know some people here that are, are listeners play in 14-man leagues, 12-man leagues. Uh, two quarterback leagues. This means you need to pick up Willis right now and uh, put him in one of your lineups. Only if you're in a 14 man league or a two quarterback league or a, you know, just a lot of injuries league. Um, so uh, yeah, just Willis deep, deep, deep sleeper. I started him last week, like a fool trying to be the cool guy in my other league ended up with two points. Uh, still got the dub just because Foreman, but um, you know, don't be, don't be a fool like I am and just start trying to act cool and start random players like that unless it's necessary, unless you're playing against the number one guy and need a home run threat or something crazy like an act of God, then you're starting Malik Willis. Otherwise, just information for you to know. Kadarius Tony, not on the injury report for the first time in a very long time. Looks like he's not even hurt. I, uh, I watched some of his pregame stuff for the Chiefs. Looking really, really good out there. So um, I'm sure he's going to be implemented uh, rather quickly. But that offense, um, there is no such thing as a wide receiver one. So be very, 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 very careful. Uh, James Conner, game time decision. Looks like this is the closest he's been to returning. So, you know, owners, a uh, little, a little bit sad, a uh, sad violin being played right now for um, rest in peace, you know, but again, you were probably not even that excited about the outcome you've been getting lately from him. Um, so just something to watch out for. If he does play uh, James Conner plays, I'm still not putting him up into my lineups. Uh, I'll take the three touchdowns if they come, um, but I'm, you know, I'm, I don't have a fragile emotional attachment to these players where if I bench somebody and something goes wrong, that it ruins my day. We are, we are better than that. Um, Darren Waller, questionable but improving. Um, this is the other side of the conversation. Tight ends are rarer. They're not like running backs where there's a bunch of them. There's only a few. So if he plays, there's a world where you're probably going to start Darren Waller versus, you know, some random person you've been starting or you're rotating tight ends. Um, Cooper Cup is going to play. He had that ankle injury, and we were all a little worried. Um, Cooper Cup owners were more worried than the people facing him. But um, – Another thing to note is Van Jefferson is going to get to play and he does not look injured at all. Um, so if something happens, Cooper Cup, you know, resprains that ankle or this is just the Fugazi situation for like a game script, you know, to confuse the opponents and Cooper Cup won't really play that much. Then Van Jefferson is a nice, nice stash for at least a couple of games. Anything else to add there, Shovit? No, nope, I think you hit it all. All right, let's jump into the rundown. The buy apocalypse is upon us. The Browns aren't a buy. The Cowboys aren't a buy. The Broncos aren't a buy. The Giants aren't a buy. The Steelers aren't a buy. And the 49ers are on a buy. It's either going to crumble you or it's going to make a bad team look good because you're facing a team without a lot of these studs like Chubb, uh, no CD Lamb, you know, uh, no Saquon, no Najee Harris. Not That probably helps you more than it hurts you. <laughs> but um, uh, no CMC, no Debo. There's a lot of key players out. Um just keep that in mind. The first game we're going to talk about here, the Chargers at the Falcons. Wow. So, you know, whenever we hear the Chargers, I always think of points. I'm like, points, points, points. Uh, the over-under is sitting at 49 and a half. Chargers are favored by three. Um, Chargers are four and three, Shovit. I have no idea how. They're, they have, they're missing every piece possible on defense. They're missing every piece possible on offense but outside of the name of Herbert and Eckler. And they have single-handedly, quite literally, taken this team to four and three. Um, Falcons are doing the same on the other end. They're somehow number one in their division, making them uh, four and four. 
that's very impressive from a run first team that does not believe in throwing the football very much. Um, Chargers are fourth best passing offense out, while missing all these weapons. In, insane to think about. It's absolutely insane how they're even doing that right now. Um, from a fantasy perspective, for you guys to know about, Josh Palmer is a nice little, let's see what he has in store, play against the Falcons' 31st passing defense. Um, with all the bye weeks upon us and with all these Chargers weapons gone, I think Palmer becomes a wide receiver two option immediately, not even a flex option. Uh, you're probably going to start him. Yeah, he's my guy in place of Ayuk in another league that um, I'm starting Josh Palmer because the, the ball's got to go somewhere, right? Absolutely. That's that's the whole principle here. I'm not excited about Palmer. He has a big injury history as well. Um, however, you know, with if you have the um, fourth best passing offense and all of your weapons are gone, like you said, the ball's got to go somewhere. And by default, it's going to go to him. Whether he catches it or not, I don't know, but we'll see. Um, so that's all really from the Chargers perspective. You're going to start the quarterback. You're going to start Eckler and Palmer is the only person I feel comfortable about. Maybe Everett. I'm actually starting Everett in two leagues. Um, but outside of those players, there's really nothing much you need to be speculative about. Um, Carter would have been the other option, but he's got an injury designation as well. Not sure what's going on there, but I don't feel comfortable. There's better options. Um, on the other end, the Falcons in sleeper alert, sleeper of the week for me. Sneaky good breakout Algier game happening, P quite possibly. Chargers are 31st. Not only um, – they're not only a bad passing defense, they're 31st against the run D as well. Caleb Huntley's definitely there. Uh, they alter in who gets more carries, but Algier always gets more passing down work. So from that standpoint, I expect the Falcons, who are the most dominant or the top three most dominant uh, rushing teams in the league, they're going to continue doing that. Fourth quarter, three, eight, three points left, down by 14. They're running the ball. So knowing that, it's good to have a player from that team uh, going against the 31st ranked run defense. Um, start pits, you evil maniacs. You, um, you're, you're either going to start pits or not start pits. Uh, Pitts is always going to be a conversation moving forward or just all season long. Um, make sure you start them this week. Um, just back to back. Let's see if they let's see if they're actually going to do something about um, this game script after he has a pretty good game last week. Um, yeah. So everything else is pretty standard. Um, we talked about Eckler, uh, but you cannot you cannot sit the best player in fantasy football. Awesome. That takes us to the next game. Miami Dolphins at Chicago Bears, Miami is favored by four and a half points. The over under is 45 and a half in that game. Uh, Bears, you're probably going to start Justin Fields. That guy has been playing pretty well as far as fantasy goes. Uh, last week against the Cowboys career high, 120 passing, 120 passing rating. And he's getting touchdowns, th throwing the ball, and also gives you that upside of a uh, rush that the a running quarterback has so uh tuesday was very stressful for me tuesday night because i was up at 2 a.m and i was wasn't <laughs> sure if i should put a waiver claim for justin fields or should i just wait and just pick him up and i was like i don't know three cars got russell wilson he probably wants justin fields so i like put the waiver claim on there we'll see if that ends up <laughs> working out for me but uh justin fields is the guy that i am going with uh this week against the dolphins um and then on the rushing side montgomery herbert i uh, Herbert's kind of being this guy that you could probably start kind of like a Pollard and Ezekiel situation. So you could uh, roll the dice there. Um, however, I think that the Dolphins score a lot of points. So if the Dolphins come up, go up ahead uh, really quick, then yeah. it's going to be a tough matchup uh, for the Bears rushing attack. Uh, on the Dolphins side, Tua, obviously, Tyreek Hill, Waddle, uh Gusecki even given the depth of the tight end this year uh, Gusecki has been finding ways to get to the touchdown finding ways to do some gritty action or whatever you want to call that <laughs> and so you might want to start Gusecki as well and Raheem Mostert okay so he the Bears allowed 26.1 fantasy points per game to the Bears uh two uh running backs that they play against so Raheem Mostert is a good start here uh for your rushing attack I mean he's just not RB1 you're probably starting him every week but even more now uh mm -hmm. although uh, you know, something to consider. It's in Chicago. There's a 50% chance of rain. And I was thinking about this, who this is going to hurt. And I think that it doesn't hurt guys like Tyreek Hill, uh, Mostert, but I feel like this would hurt Waddle more. I think Hill would get whatever, you know, his points. You're probably still going to start him, but, you know, a word of caution that there may be some rain there. 
maybe more running running attack as well. Um, I think that the Bears will try to run the ball as they have been doing all all year long. Even when they down, they run the ball. However, the game script here is the Dolphins are uh, allowed the fourth most passing yards to opposing quarterbacks. So whether or not that changes, that we should we'll see. Probably not. I think the Bears will still run regardless who they're playing against. It's just the way they are. Um, but. I think Dolphins have just much more firepower to for the Bears to be able to win this game. So I say Dolphins win this game. Nice. Yeah, I, I would agree with you that if one person was to take a hit on a rain situation, it would be Waddle over Hill. Um, but Waddle has outscored Hill a couple of times this, this week. He's like with um, I don't know if he's got more targets, but the explosiveness is just as just just as much there. Um, mm-hmm. And he seems to be more of a touchdown target than Tyreek Hill is. So. Um, yeah, again, game script uh, barring, yeah. you start to, uh, I mean, you're more confident in Hill. But, um, you know, if the rain isn't really a factor, then you are. Like, hit Waddle is a top 10 play at right. wide receiver's position. Um, and then, yeah, you talk about the um, Ezekiel Elliott versus Pollard. I think it's dead on. Um, the only problem is Justin Fields has the 32nd ranked o- offensive line versus uh, Cowboys get to actually run the ball well with a really good offensive line. So that just maybe that just tells you how much uh, how good Herbert really is because he's doing all this with a bad line. Panthers at Bengals is the conversation we're going to have next. Cincinnati's favored by seven. Over unders at forty two and a half. Oh man, I I don't really feel good about this game as far as fantasy starters go outside of Foreman because he's the goat. Um, but DJ Moore is now being cons- I mean it's been it's a two game sample size, but this is where the gut factor comes in. I was big on DJ Moore at the beginning of the year. And this team, just the Baker Mayfield situation, just everything, just it was not good. Like nothing was favoring anybody in order to succeed. Um, Now the game script has kind of favored DJ Moore because now it's PJ Walker in town and he likes to target a few people. He's getting uh, the former rookie involved a little bit, but he's also targeting more DJ Moore. And, um, you know, I I think he's easily a flex category talk uh, wide receiver two after this game. I think he does well this game, too, in the next game. When he had three games under your belt and he's more aware on people's radars, then he can be talked about wide receiver two. But you're getting 13 targets, 10 targets, 11 targets. That's, you know, and you have the skill to do it. That's easily a wide receiver two, maybe a wide receiver one talk. We'll see. Um, So, yeah, uh, negative game script always favors a receiver. And, you know, Bengals at Panthers. Bengals just coming off of, I'm sorry, Panthers at Bengals. Bengals just coming off of an embarrassing loss. Um, I suspect they will improve in their game. They're going to figure out ways to score points. Um, that's going to put a negative game script for DJ Moore and the Panthers, and that in- equals a lot of passing. However, don't forget, Awuzie, their best cornerback, and Hilton, their other secondary member, they are both out. Awuzie is out for sure. Hilton's likely out. Um, that just means more points for DJ Moore. Uh, Foreman is a started and forget it guy at this point. Can't believe I'm saying that, but um, unless proven otherwise, Bengals give up 125 rushing yards per game. And uh, Chubba Hubbard's out. So that means all 125 of those are likely going to Foreman. Um, and the way he's playing, that could easily be 150, 160 at this point. Uh, Bengals look terrible when Chase isn't playing. Um, Higgins is a little bit slower. The ankle probably still bothering him. Boyd is a father time situation. He's just become slower and slower. When a linebacker is chasing you down, when you have five uh, yards of separation, that just means you're too old, man. Um, if, the, if you have other options, I'd consider it. Like, you know... Um, like a Palmer, uh, I'm starting Palmer over Higgins and Boyd. I can't believe I'm saying that. Um, but don't forget, like I just mentioned, uh, you can't really go wrong uh, because of what happened last week. They're gonna they're gonna make it an emphasis to get the ball to the receivers. Uh, I'm sure Burrow's not gonna allow bad back to back games, so he's gonna get the ball to his receivers. Um, you're starting them, but confidence level not too high, not too high. I, I'm, especially if you're starting them both, like Sweetheart is. Um, I, I hope for his sake they do uh, fairly well, but. Um, there's no way Higgins is going to get 25 and Boyd's going to get 20, right? Um, we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, Mixon, unfortunately, you're going to start him. You know, there's no world where you're going to be benching Mixon unless you have a lot of good options. Uh, his yards per carry is trending down to being just as bad as Najee Harris at this point. But, um, you know, Najee Harris at least gets replaced with his backup for some of the vulturing. Mixon rarely gets replace Piran comes in every once in a while to give him some time but you can still expect passing down yardage to salvage him and goal line work to salvage him this is why you're not benching Mixon um and then Hayden Hurst is the last player to talk about here he's a blind dice roll I'm not excited about starting Hurst but if I want to get five points for my tight end um that's where Hurst comes in uh Hurst comes in 
Yeah, I think the Weezy and Hilton now is a very key point if you're going to consider starting the Bengals defense against Panthers, who you may not uh-huh. think as a, that good of an offense. Uh-huh. The Bengals just might not be a good defense to start this week because of that right. as well. Awesome. Next up, we've got the NFC North showdown of the Packers 3-5 and five at Lions 1-6. and six. Green Bay is favored here by 3.5 points. Over under is 49.5. Uh, the Packers, guys, that you're going to start on your fantasy, I, I think Dobbs is a very good start here against the Lions passing defense that has been atrocious atrocious all year. So, um, you know, you, you definitely want to consider starting Dobbs. Uh, Aaron Jones, Lions are allowing 27.4 fantasy points per game to running backs. Uh, so Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon, that combo could work out in your favor for you and your fantasy lineups this week as well. And on the Lions side, no Hawkinson. So Amon Ray St. Brown season, if it hasn't already started, this is the time for it to start. Uh, along with DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams against the Packers defense, run defense that is not doing so well. Um, so you can definitely start those guys. Lions like to run the ball uh, as well w- with those guys, and they they get uh, they get into the end zone with Swift and Jamal Williams. So those guys are are a um, a decent enough start for you. Um, but yeah, I think the game script is you know this is two struggling NFC North teams. Uh, Packers are doing really bad. Uh, as are the Lions with their one and six record. Rodgers is playing with a thumb injury. Uh, he said it's not getting any better. He doesn't seem very excited about it. Um, and uh, and then, so I just think that both teams are struggling, but I think the Packers are going to turn it around uh, against the Detroit Lions. They're dead last in yards uh, allowed per game. Packers have enough weapons to be able to dis- defeat the Lions. Um, so I think the Packers win, but certainly is going to be an interesting matchup of which one of the lesser teams in the NFL comes out on top. God, I hope the Lions win so bad. This is going to be the lowest point of Aaron Rodgers' career if he loses this game. I know. He's got to be, like, you know, looking back at all his decisions of not of, of, leave, of staying with the Packers and considering, man, maybe I should have gone somewhere else. Maybe 49ers would have been a good team. It's crazy. It's crazy how much his ownership hates him. It's insane. <laughs> No Jonathan Taylor-led Colts visit the Patriots. Oh, my God. Sounds like a nightmare. New England's favored by five and a half over-unders at 40.5. Where are the points going to come from, Shovit? Do you got any hunches where the points are coming from? Because I don't. I, I, I am thinking the points are coming from the Patriots' defense. I think this is a, a defensive start of the week for me. Um, you got a, you know, basically a rookie quarterback, basically a rookie quarterback who's still trying to figure out what he should do, what he shouldn't do. Is he a running quarterback? Is he not? We don't know any of that information. Um, the chemistry is just not there with the rest of the team. And now you're missing your best weapon and um, Jonathan Taylor, um, you know, 27th ranked QBs in Indianapolis all season long. Um, fifth, fifth worst offensive line against a Bill Belichick led team at Bill Belichick's home. This screams nightmare. Um, And, um, you know, however, the data shows that um, the Patriots' run D is um, 22nd right now at this moment. So there is a chance for somebody, somebody that knows how to run the football, to get some fantasy points. I'm not saying wins and losses. That is Colts. God bless the Colts uh, if they're going to uh, Patriots' land and trying to pull a win with all this stuff happening. But with that 22nd ranked run defense, there's a chance to have points. And um, with that being said, you know, do I am I confident that Deion Jackson is going to do good uh, after Jonathan Taylor has been ruled out? I'm not. I'm really not. I race, I basically just picked Deion Jackson up uh, because my opponent has Jonathan Taylor. And I saw the news two days ago where Jonathan Taylor re-aggravated his ankle or some ankle. I was like, fuck that. I ain't messing around. Like, I'm not trying to give anybody an upper leg in any chance. Let me just pick him up. Um, I wasn't I wasn't expecting him to start, but although I did think, like, what's going to happen? There's no Hines. Uh, Moss is coming in and understanding the offense in a couple of days. No, it's going to be Deion Jackson, especially because he played so well last game. So I thought he was going to start. But, um, you know, I'm still not confident that he's going to be on my roster starting um, – uh, Sunday 
So, uh, yeah, so that being said, it's, it's a person you want to have on your roster at this moment, but wait for the news, okay? Wait for the news. Uh, it's not a good matchup, like I mentioned. Um, the, the game script is likely not going to favor them, but they do. there is some room for points to be had. Um, so you can start him. Just be cautious. This is not one of those old Deion Jackson games where uh, the matchup was good and you started him and you expected points. I don't expect points at this point. We're going to have to wait and see a little bit on how what happens until Sunday. Um, but right now, the close offense score is barely over 16 points a game. They're visiting New England, uh, losing all these players. I don't expect a positive game script for Deion Jackson. However, he did have 10 uh, up to 10 targets, 11 targets and 10 catches or something crazy like that. So he's a really good football player. So uh, don't feel like you can't start him after all the things I've said, but also don't feel like he's a must start because it is against Bill Belichick at his home with a shitty offense. Um, and then the receiving option for the Colts, hesitant on starting Pittman, Campbell, Pierce. If I were to say that there's a game to bench Pittman at all this year, it may be this one if you have other options. Um, definitely not starting Campbell and Pierce. I'll take the points if they end up scoring. I'm not going to feel bad. Um, Colts offensive line against the run is ranked 30th. So you're starting Ramondre Stevenson with full force. Uh, and there's a world where you might see some, you know, um, What's his name? Harris. Harris, actually. He's a little injured right now from a health standpoint. Um, but there's a little bit where Monday Stevenson doesn't have to do much work, and this could be a split situation if they if the defense just overpowers the Colts. Yeah, I hope Ellinger ends up being a good uh, option for them, kind of saying that Matt Ryan's going to be the – or uh, Ellinger's going to be the quarterback until the end of the year. I think that's kind of bold. And that is that very hurts, bold. That, you know, that hurts me as the Pittman owner. You know, it, it, yeah. it's just kind of uh, concerning for sure. Right. Next up, we've got the Buffalo Bills at New York Jets. Uh, Beth, Buffalo is favored by 11 and a half points. The over under is 46 points. You're rolling with the guys from the Bills that you have been all year. Stephon Diggs, Josh Allen, Gabe, uh, Gabe Davis. Probably not Singletary, though, because of the Hines. Naheem Hines kind of taking some of the pass catching responsibilities from the running back position kind of limits the, uh, I guess, the ceiling for Singletary uh, just a little bit. So just be wary if you are going to start Singletary there. And on the Jets side, uh, the only guy that maybe Tyler, Con Tyler Conkling from as a tight end, uh, he's kind of a boomer bust potential. And then they recently got James Robinson, but against this top five rushing defense, I don't think he's just quite ready if you do have James Robinson uh, in order to st uh, start him. Same thing with Michael Carter, probably not the best start. Uh, with So although the uh, Packers did score over 100 yards rushing uh aaron jones had a great day uh last week so against this bills defense will that continue i highly doubt that i'm going to put my money on the on bills rush defense um so yeah i think the this game script is going to call for the jets defense to step up sauce gardner dj reed with a tough task guarding uh stefan diggs and and, and uh, gabe davis that's gonna yeah, be big, uh, biggest challenge for that secondary for that for that wide receiver core yeah, absolutely. So that's gonna be fun to see. I would, I kind of want to see Sauce Gardner shut down um, Diggs, but I doubt that's gonna happen. I can't afford I, that. <laughs> I can't afford that. <laughs> I doubt that. Um, you know, and then and then the on the Jets side, you know, they had the, they were winning games. Uh, th they were three in a row. Uh, they won games with Zach Wilson, but all three of the Jets' losses have come at home, and they're averaging twelve point seven points per game. You cannot win the game against the Bills averaging 12.7 points per game. So you definitely need to pull points. Where is, where is that going to come from? No Brees Hall, uh, may, maybe some Garrett Wilson. Zach Wilson just needs to be uh, a better player. All this to say, uh, you know, Bills lead the league in turnovers and Zach Wilson is prone to turnovers. It's going to be a tough matchup. Bills probably win and cover the spread at 11 and a half. Yeah, I think I think you're right. Um, something else I'll note, I am if I'm a Michael Carter or um... – Michael Carter, not owner. I'm trying to get this man. Okay. So before the season started, when there was no off official starting running back, I really liked the way Michael Carter was playing. I'm like, this guy is really good. Why do they draft Brees Hall? And then Brees Hall is just that much better. He's like a Kenneth Walker. Like he's more explosive, but Michael Carter is shifty. He can make things happen. He's a really, really good running back. And it's perfect. Like this is, this is, oh, I can't even believe I'm revealing the secrets of fantasy football right now, but this is amazing. He had a, a Okay. had a pretty tough matchup last week has the hardest matchup you can think of this week so i'm hoping for a bad day okay let me hope for a bad day for michael carter so i can just sweep him off his feet and just put him on my back and take him into my championship you know 
just happiest yeah. owner ever. It was the ideal situation. Uh, there's no threat from James Robinson yet. He's still kind of learning the playbook. And, you know, frankly, quite frankly, after the first few games, he's kind of been on a downtrend. They probably just got him to, like, you know, play late down work um, or early down work and whatnot. But the passing back is going to be Michael Carter. He's just – he's good He's good at catching the ball. So, with a bad game, okay game, let's call it eight points, you know, eight-point game last week. And then I'm hoping for, like, a six-point game, five-point game this week. Oh, my God, I'm sending trade offers – everywhere for my car because the chances are they're going to say yes if i if i put somebody up there that's like slightly a nazi a fucking nazi right if you got a nazi you put the nazi on the back, throw that shit out there maybe even make it look like you're giving up too much and ask for another player this is going to work i i can't wait to tell you the results of this next week but i'm going to have michael carter on at least two of my three leagues think on that that's why you listen to only pay playbook these are the guys you need to buy low on right for sure for sure absolutely Los Vikingos at Los Comandores. Vikings are favored by three. Over-unders at 43.5. They don't speak Spanish. That was the Vikings visiting the Commanders. I don't even think Commandores is the right term to talk about the Commanders. It just felt right. Commanders, uh, D is the middle of the pack. Uh, speaking of feeling right, I don't feel right at all if I'm a Commanders D owner. Um, I see a lot of people are actually starting them. I'm not sure why. Um, but the percentages are there. I think like there's like a 15% start this week against the Vikings as far as lineups go. Maybe they're just leaving them up there for right now. But the D is middle of the pack. It's not as bad as people think it is. I know when we think of the commanders, we're like, this team sucks. Um, on some aspect, not on all aspects. So I think having Heineke has kind of changed the game script in their favor a little bit. Um, they're controlling the ball a little bit more. They're establishing the run a little bit more. Um, so the defense has become middle of the pack. Vikings D surprisingly is ranked sixth. So um, I talked about the Patriots defense being startable this week or my must start defense of the week. Um, Vikings are right up there. They're really close. I'm not as confident, but I'm confident enough to start them in my own fantasy league. I have like a rule. I don't start Vikings defenses in my leagues. Um, just from a emotional standpoint, there might be biases. I'm, you know, subconscious biases, but this week I don't care about those biases. I want to see what Terry McLaurin can do against some of these uh, secondary members and what these running backs, Antonio Gibson and, and guys are going to do against some of the uh, best run defenders in the league. Um, the Vikings are missing Tomlinson, which is the run stopping force of the team. He's not playing this week. So I can see Antonio Gibson taking the ball up the middle and having a pretty good day um, on that conversation. Besides early down work, uh, Brian Robinson was just a feel good story. We felt good. They rubbed it all over our faces. We, I know we know he got shot. Next conversation to talk about. But thank you for all the memories, Brian Robinson. Uh, Terry McLaurin, again, it's like the whole DJ Moore, Higgins, Boyd situation. Um, you're not confident. You're not putting him up there and like, yes, can't wait for 20 points this week. But you're probably going to get some points because where else is the ball going to go? Um, and the Vikings secondary is filled with a bunch of old people. It's just a bunch of old people and a bunch of too young to understand football people. Um, so it's chaotic. It's extremely chaotic. McLaurin's likely going to be on Patrick Peterson, um, or Patrick Peterson's going to be on McLaurin. And that's not a fair, frankly, that's not a good matchup for uh, Patrick Peterson unless they play a lot of his own defense, which we do. So, um, you know, he's going to get those opportunities. I think I, I'm starting McLaurin just because the game script is not going to be in their favor. They're going to be down by more, double digits, hopefully by the half. Um, so then McLaurin has to be utilized. And it is Heineke and not some of the other quarterbacks we've talked about this year. And he is much more McLaurin friendly. Um, as far as the Vikings, really not much to talk about. You start Cooks, you start Jefferson, and you start Thielen, um, depending on the matchup. Um, but in this matchup, I'm starting Thielen as well. Um, I'm holding off on Hawkinson, although he soon will be a must start. Um, but just don't forget, okay? Like, I think this is where people go really, really wrong. Just because you have all these weapons doesn't mean all the weapons are going to eat. That is not the game script the Vikings have. This is not the Bills. We don't just throw the ball all game long. It's still a very much methodical offense that's uh, banked on seven yard passes, two yard passes, 15 yard passes, and 30 yard passes. It's kind of all over the field, and that's not changing anytime soon. And it's still very much a run first team uh, when the game script is friendly. So do not just expect to start all these players and be like, oh, why did Hawkinson have a bad day? I thought he was supposed to be better. Yeah, well, the team is supposed to be better. Hawkinson, by default, does not become better. 
Yeah, one thing I'll add to your uh, defense conversation by, uh, regarding the Vikings defense, one thing I like is that the over-under is 43 and a half, so lower scoring points than some of the other games that we are, we've are we talked about. Um, uh-huh. But and, and looking at just what Vikings defense has done, they you know g- gave up 26 points to Arizona, but they came up with two interceptions, one fumble return, four sacks. So if they're able to you know get the turnovers, get the sacks like they can, I think yeah. that they're definitely a, a solid start. Yeah, that's been the MO. Like, Ben, don't break, but they're allowing yards galore. But then at the end of it, when the red zone area comes by, they're finding a way to sack them or force a turnover or something. So that's what you're banking yeah. on if you start the Vikings. All right. That takes us to the Las Vegas Raiders at two and five against the Jaguars, two and six. Las Vegas is favored by one and a half points over under his 48. Raiders are coming off a terrible, embarrassing shutdown game against the Saints. Um, so they're looking to bounce back against a, a struggling Jaguars again. Uh, also, Jaguars kind of, they, they lose games, but they lose close games. So um, this is going to be an interesting matchup. I think the Jaguars definitely can come in and win uh, this game. But uh, on as far as fantasy goes, you're going to start guys like Devontae Adams. You're, you're going to start Josh Jacobs. And if you are feeling kind of, I don't know, a little... You've got some luck. I, I'm feeling risque. lucky on, on, on Google. You're feeling a little risque. Then maybe you start Derek Carr uh, <laughs> against this Jaguars Jaguars defense. They're allowing the eighth most eighth most receiving yards uh, this season. So game, you know, just as far as the matchup goes, Derek Carr is startable in that sense. And on the Jaguars side, uh, Travis Etienne, man, that guy showed us last week that. He is a beast. He is a stud. No James Robinson, no Vulture to take away any of his carries or catches. And so you're going to start him and be very happy uh, starting him. Uh, Christian Kirk, the the number one receiver for the Jaguars, given that the Raiders defense is not very good. They're uh, averaging, allowing 23.3 points per game, which ranks 23rd in uh, in the NFL. Sorry, the defense gives up 24.9 points per game is 25th in the oh, league as far as points. Cool. So uh, Christian Kirk uh, can find ways to get into the, t- uh, to the touchdown, to the end zone. And then also uh, their tight end, who I am drawing a blank with this guy that we hate. Um, what's his name? <laughs> I'm not going to uh, say it. I'm not going to say oh it. Oh, my God. You remember I hate, it. <laughs> I hate this guy so much, and I can't remember no, his name. I double, know. Double E's. Double E's. Double E's. Oh my God, this is going to kill me. This is Evan this is Ingram. Crazy. Evan Ingram. Oh my God. Ah, God. I hate this guy, but you're going to start, you're going to start Evan Ingram um, this week as well uh, because the Jaguars do like to utilize them often. So um, it's, 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 in terms of which way to lean, I think I'm going to lean Raiders just because they're, they've, they've got to have a bounce back game and put themselves, have a statement game after that terrible loss. Uh, but honestly, it's anybody's ball game and it could go either way. Hence the line. It's only fair by one and a half. So it'll be interesting to see who comes up on top in this game. I look at Evan Ingram every day on that waiver wire. And I think, see, I, I mean, I, I'm not preaching or like, I'm not doing what I preach. And it's like, don't let emotions get in fantasy. Don't let emotions get in fantasy. And uh, I'm letting emotions get in fantasy. And I don't give, I don't give a shit. I'm not starting Evan Ingram. I'm just, I won't do it. I've been burnt. I've been burnt more than probably by any other player in fantasy football history uh-huh. than than Evan Ingram. So you know what? He can sit there. Yep. He can sit there in free agency and let someone else have those six to twelve fantasy points. So you know, uh, and I, I probably did the same thing too. It was Evan Ingram versus Taysom Hill this week, and I'm going with Taysom Hill. Yeah, I mean that, that I like that. I like that. I wish I wish Taysom Hill was available last week because I went with a double stack of Andy Dalton and Alvin Kamara, and I was like, hmm, let me just let me just cover let me just cover, cover all the bases and just get. Uh, uh, but yeah, he didn't do that hot last week, so I kind of lucked out there. All right. So battle of the birds, battle of the better of the NFC birds. We got the Seahawks five and three visiting the Cardinals four and four. I mean, look at these two teams, man. Who would have thought? Not them, not you and I, and definitely not their head coaches. Seahawks are five and three. Like just saying that is crazy to me. They're, you know, they're very much in it. They're one of the best teams in football. Cardinals are very much in it. Despite all the injuries they've had, the lack of Hopkins, Connor, um, all the little man struggles they've had on quarterback situation early in the season, they're back at 500. Now, you know, like once you're 500, that gives you a much better outlook for the rest of the season. Um, Seahawks are on a three game winning streak. They've gone uh, one and one versus the Cardinals uh, for three years in a row now. So it's still anybody's game. Um, 
And the Seahawks defense has improved significantly. This is not the same Seahawks defense we were making fun of uh, three weeks ago. Um, they've held, they held Saquon to under 53 yards rushing last week. And that's insane. The amount of betters that lost money uh, betting on the over on Saquon's rushing yards, but there a lot, a lot of people there. Um, the Seahawks are allowing fifth fewest total yards per game over the last three games also. So there's been a, definite shift in culture and it's crazy they haven't added anybody new they haven't changed their defensive schemes it's this is what happens when you believe in your team you know like coming in like oh we got no Russell Wilson what are we gonna do versus Geno Smith like just with that BDE and it's it's rubbing off on the defense the defense the the cornerback the rookie cornerback is ranked or he was ranked number one uh, on PFF for seven weeks in a row I'm not sure if that's changed as of late don't see why it would change they've only gotten better um so, you know, with allowing the fifth uh, fewest total yards per game, holding players like Saquon to under their expected yards for that game and just demolishing teams, being on a win streak, you're starting Geno Smith at this point. You're starting Geno Smith. Um, again, there's a lot of good cornerback quarterbacks, so you're not debating. Don't get cute. But if it's Herbert versus Geno Smith right now, I'm starting Geno Smith. I'm not even batting an eye. I'm starting Geno Smith over Herbert. Um, Kenneth Walker is a must start. Obviously, you're not going to mess around there. Um, and if you have better options than DK and Lockett, I would go that route. Um, but don't get cute. Let's not get cute. DK had that injury, but scored a touchdown last week. Probably going to start DK. Um, but then again, like if you have Godwin or DK, what do you do? You go with the surefire targets of Godwin, right? The, the ceiling's a little bit lower for uh, DK, but the floor, or the ceiling's lower for Godwin, but the ceiling, the floor is much higher for Godwin as well. So it depends how you want to play this role. Lockett, not as surefire as, as he was um, early in the season. So I'm not too concerned about him. I'm okay if you don't want to play him over some other players. I keep mentioning DJ Moore, but just super high on DJ Moore this week. And um, if you're going to debate between him and Lockett, I'm going the Moore route. Um, from the Cardinals standpoint, you got Kyler Murray, must start. Uh, you got this Connor Eno situation, no longer a must start. Play with that, see how it goes. If Connor plays, um, I wouldn't start anybody. If Eno plays, you can make a case for Eno starting. Um, Hopkins must start, Ertz must start. And if you're feeling risque, like we mentioned earlier, uh, Rondell Moore is there. Am I feeling risky enough to start on them? Absolutely not. There's just, there's no reliability there. He kind of rumbled into the end zone as a five foot nine guy going through three defensive players last week. That's not happening all the time. So the points are heavily inflated. Um, and then, you know, there's going to be players like you mentioned, Romeo Dobbs is going to be available. Um, so again, if you're wondering about Lockett, Rondell Moore, if you're in that type of a territory, 12 man league, 14 man league, there's better options out there. I wish I could start Rondell Moore, you know, with Amon Ray St. Brown, Tyreek Hill, um, and, and Michael Pittman. Yeah, I can't. I can't. But I do like Rondell Moore uh, uh, coming off the slot. He doesn't have to be the focal guy. DeAndre Hopkins is there uh, as wide receiver one. From uh, I think he plays a lot better from the slot uh, than he does with that focal target on him. So uh, I wish I could start him, but I've got too many. Yeah, weapons. yeah on, on that note. I'm on the I'm on the same boat, but you you just you less humble bragged than I would have. <laughs> Next up, we've got the Los Angeles Rams three and four fighting against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at three and five. Tampa Bay is favored by three points, and over under is at forty two and a half. On the Rams side, you're starting Cooper Cup, even do, though he has an ankle injury. Um, something to monitor. He is a sure start, uh, like you said, right at the beginning of this episode. Um, so you, you definitely gonna, are going to play him. Uh, Tyler Higby is an interesting play here as well. He's coming up. He's not coming off of a great game. However, uh, the Rams and uh, Matthew Stafford does target Tyler Higby uh, when he can. So he just loves his white receivers. So Tyler Higby <laughs> fits that criteria there. Uh, Ronnie here Rivers versus Daryl Henderson. I think you're going to shy away from the Rams running back situation. It's a split carry. Uh, right now, Henderson got, I think, what, 46% of the uh, carries. So you definitely want to shy away from any of those uh, guys from the from the Rams standpoint. Uh, and on the Bucs, uh, Fournette, you're going to start him. Tom Brady is a more of a it, – it's you know, I, I struggle with Tom Brady every single week. 
Um, he, he's probably like a top, what, top 15 quarterback to start. If you really have no other options, you probably start him just because he's got the weapons. He's got Godwin, he's got Evans, and and uh, but their <laughs> offense just has not been rolling. Uh, and I think the lack of tight end health, uh, Kadon's really not kind of showing what, as he, what he, what we hoped he would be. Um, so that, that kind of, uh, steers me away from Tom Brady a little bit. I'm, I'm starting Justin Fields over Tom Brady, uh, in, in terms of that. Um, but yeah, Rams defense, uh, is pretty bad. Rams defense has only 15 sacks with ranks 24th in the NFL. Uh, the Buccaneers are getting back their, uh, cornerbacks. So I don't remember right now their their two, uh, cornerbacks are starting this week. So I think the Bucs are a little bit more, they're favored here. And I think they have a high, better chance of beating the Rams. Um, so I think the Bucs win this game. Yeah. You would think, right. It's been a while since the Bucs. they're three and five. I mean, you got to, at some point, are you still the Bucks? Or are you like now the Falcons? The Falcons are better than you by record. So it yeah. um, depends. Also, you said Tom Brady is the top 15 startable. I mean, there's only like 12 teams or 10 teams or 14 teams in most fantasy leagues. So he's technically <laughs> not startable. <laughs> by definition, he may not be started. That that is actually true. Yeah, I mean, top fifteen is is very low for Tom Brady, but um, I, I I don't know, man. It's like their 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 game script needs to be to run the ball and then kind of complement Tom Brady to like have these play actions. Yeah. Uh, reach out to Godwin and Evans, and the running game hasn't been going yeah. well either. Like yeah. Leonard Fournette is not doing well, so that's not right. working out for them. But you right. hope that things turn around, and then um, if that if the running game can be established, yeah. I think Brady would be fine. Yeah, who would have thought offensive linemen are still the most important thing on the football field, right? Like you have a Hall of Fame coach. Who would have thought? There's all these things pointing towards success. And with two players missing from your offensive line, you're three and five. So Sunday night football, my probably my favorite type of football. I don't know why. Something about the... Dun, 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 uh, but yeah, anyways, I digress. Titans visit the Chiefs. We're going to see a lot of fantasy points, at least from one of these teams. Tennessee is favored by 12 and a half. Holy shiza. Over-unders at 45. The Chiefs may hit that by themselves, um, is what most people would think. However, however, do not get caught up in this storyline, okay? Um, as good as the Chiefs are, Tennessee is just this special, special – Tennessee is like the teacher's pet of the NFL. Like – you know, like they're always raising their hands to answer all the questions. They they always come prepared. You know, they are, they are turning in their homework assignment on time. The teacher doesn't say anything. It's almost the end of class. All the people that didn't do their homework are like, oh god, yes, he didn't say anything. And then Tennessee's like, boom, boom, Kendrick, are you going to take the assignment up today? And you know, teachers love these kind of player. And as 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 a coach, as like a football aficionado, Tennessee is just amazing. I love what they do. They're always they don't look like anything special. But they come prepared, and they're just they're just a well-rounded football team. Um, I don't know how, but they are. They have the special, special ability to slow down any game, right? When you have Derrick Henry, um, you can take control of the clock. Um, this doesn't work against every team. Remember when you said this against the Bills a while back? Um, well, that was a different Bills team. The Bills have no weaknesses. They're, like, number one on mm -hmm. defense, number one on yep. offense. It's a different story. Kansas City are better than the Bills on offense. I would say so, just because of Mahomes. But they're significantly, significantly, significantly worse on defense than the Bills are. So that means Tennessee has that open lane to drive their Henry truck to success. The, the opportunity is there. And it's done, been done before. Kansas City typically has a tough time against the Chiefs. So history is on their side. Um, Chiefs are giving up 92 yards per game on the ground. Um, so Henry usually, you know, just amplifies that against any stat line, uh, any rushing stat line, he tends to like amplify by like 2x or 1.5x. So Henry could easily get um, 140 yards this game. Um, you know, again, so from the starting sitting standpoint, Henry's a must start. Um, Woods, you know, again, it's desperation situations. I am in, I will never even have Woods on my team, let alone talk about starting him. But I can make an argument for him since he's playing the Chiefs secondary, which I just mentioned are significantly, significantly worse than you think they are. Their defense is not that good. Um, and their secondary especially. So, you know, someone's got to catch balls. It's the same conversation as like the Romeo Dobbs conversations. It's the same conversations as some of the other conversations we've had earlier today. But when you have limited receivers and you have um, a negative game script and the defensive secondary sucks, you're going to get the ball thrown your way. And uh, 
I don't know who's going to get the ball thrown to Wood, but I am under the impression it's going to be Woods. So, again, if you're in that Lockett versus Woods situation, uh, you know, you're probably still going with Lockett a little bit more, but you're entertaining the thought of Woods. And if you have a four, four wide receiver league, um, or sorry, a three wide receiver league and two flex league, then you can make a conversation for Woods strictly from a negative game script and nobody else good enough to catch the ball standpoint. And this is with Tannehill starting, by the way. If it's not Tannehill starting, which is likely going to happen, then scratch all of this. It's a just burn it all. It's like yeah. that SpongeBob meme when SpongeBob is just like burning all the file cabinets in his in his brain. Uh, this is going to be a shit show if that happens. Um, but I'm still starting Henry, without a doubt. From the Chiefs end, you're starting Mahomes. You're possibly starting Juju. I feel a lot much. I feel much much better about Juju moving forward. Um, I've been high on Juju since like week four, and there's been this chemistry that they've developed. Um, I think um, if you're feeling a little gadgety, if you're feeling a little uh, risque, our third risque pick of the pick of the week, uh, Nicole Hardman. He's gotten in the end zone three weeks in a row, one way or another. They love doing the little front shovel pass, handoffs, mm-hmm. screen passes. You know, they don't like throwing the ball to him normally, but they'll find other ways to get him the ball in their hand in his hands. Um, if he sees an uptick in targets, then he becomes a must start with that much usage um, and with their running backs kind of struggling um, so far, especially with a three-headed running back. You can't start any of those running backs at this point. Don't get cute. Like I did and started Pacheco the first week. He was called a starter. He got less touches than, uh, me, uh, what's his name, McKinnon. And um, CEH is just the CEO of, uh, he's like the second coming of, um, what's it called, Vulture King um, Murray. So just be aware. Be aware of that running back situation. If you can avoid it, avoid it, please. Um, and then Tony, we cannot not talk about Tony. He's looking good. We talked about him earlier. Um, but um, I wouldn't deploy him immediately. That's That just screams desperation. Like if you're one, one in seven or one in eight or whatever, um, and you just got to shoot for defenses um, without – if you're if you used to having too many uh, low ceiling, high floor players, maybe, maybe you just go with another risk game mode and start Tony and hope for the best. But in no shape or form am I recommending starting him this game. It's interesting that you say Sunday night football is your favorite. For me, it's definitely Thursday night football. And I know the games haven't been so well, but that cam, that Thursday night football cam, I just can't get over how amazing yeah. that is. Like they just need to add that everywhere. everywhere. And in, 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 in terms of that, uh, so it's Amazon, right? You watch on Amazon Prime. Looks like Jeff Bezos and Jay-Z are combining commanders for $6 billion to get commanders. That's crazy. That's a, that's, that's, that's a, a weird money. that's a weird mix of ownership. I wonder like which route like I, I don't know. I, I'm pretty sure both of those can be like, all right, Jay Z, I'll just make yeah. the money. You just take care of shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just let me decide what I'm gonna do, and then you just uh, make some wrap uh, of the commanders being yeah. decent. Right. Awesome. So from Sunday night football, we are gonna go to Monday night football. Ravens at Saints. Baltimore is favored from two and a half points. The over under is forty eight points. The guys you want to start in Ravens is Lamar Jackson uh, and Mark Andrews if he's playing. And if he's not playing, Isaiah likely definitely becomes a must start. When Andrews was out last game, uh, likely got a lot of targets. And even in preseason, I saw this guy uh, and I accidentally watched the Ravens uh, game on preseason on the Ravens channel. So uh, Charlie Batch was on there and he just loved talking about uh, Isaiah likely. And uh, so this is, uh, I, I, I like what I saw from him from preseason and just, you know, regular season last game was, was solid. Girlfriend, he, girl. Girlfriend comes into the goes comes into the room preseason week three. You got the Ravens on. What are you doing, babe? I thought football didn't start for two months. Sorry, it was an accident. I don't know what happened. I, I'm accidentally <laughs> watching the Ravens. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, sounds very similar to what have happened here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, and uh, also on uh, the running back situation for the Ra- uh, Ravens scares me. Kenyon, you mentioned Gus Edwards earlier uh, and Kenyon Drake. The Saints are allowing 20.3 points per game to running backs, which is the 11th lowest. And 20.3 points per game seems like a lot. But now that you have Lamar Jackson in the in the mix, that's going to hurt the running backs and um, you know points that they can get. So uh, any of the running backs from the Ravens side, I would steer away from. And as I say this, this game's on Monday Night Football. Watch it be like a complete game stream. But looking at the stats, like that's uh, what I'm seeing. Uh, yeah, if you're, if you're going to start one of them, if you're going to start one of them right now, you can't do Justice Hill. I hope Sweetheart so listens to this. This is the only advice I'm, I'm going to give towards our game script. We've got Justice Hill in the starting lineup right now. And I'm over here like, do I not know something? Am I missing something right now? 
Why is Justice Hill in his lineup? Are you messing with me? Some next level, like, it's got me worried. I'm, like, sweating a little bit. Not sure why he's doing that. But um, Hayden Drake would be the guy you start here. And yeah. um, Gus Edwards is injured. So I'm, like, losing sleep over why my dude, who knows a good enough good amount of football, is starting Justice Hill. What What is going on? I know. I, uh, Ishan did the same thing against me. He started someone. He was going to start someone that was like, what do you, oh, Alexander Madison. I was like, Madison's a starting? What, what's going on here? Like, what am I, what am I missing here? Like, I, yeah. I was in that, in that same boat. But Sukar is definitely going to listen to this because he's doing the editing. And so he'll see <laughs> and <laughs> make some changes. Right. He'll make some changes now. Uh, so that's all on the Ravens side. On the Saints side, you're going to start Chris Olave. He's a wide receiver one there. Alvin Kamara, stud running back as well. And then I'm rolling the dice on the tight end situation this week week i am gonna start uh taysom uh, taysom hill i i like um i like that the mark ingram not being there taysom hill was utilized as the rb2 and then he also mm -hmm. does does weird taysom hill stuff that you can definitely bank on as well um but yeah this is going to be a key test for the ravens defense going against the saints offense which are averaging 25 points per game how uh, they added how are they doing this that's a great question. I don't, I, they're just finding ways to get to the end zone. We all, we talk about the Saints defense being good, good all of last year, but that's not the case. I mean, they, they showed up last week, uh, zero points for the Raiders, but um, yeah, they're just finding ways to get to get to end zone and Alvin Kamara, Chris Olave, and then who would have thought Taysom Hill is allowing them to do that. And then can't forget about Andy Dalton, their quarterback who was the streamable option last week. This week, I'm not sure if he is going to be streamable um, against the Ravens for me. Um, but yeah, so uh, the Ravens defense, they get Ro Rokon Smith, um, which is Andy Dalton's old teammate. And, you know, they haven't seen any uh, tape on Rokon Smith. Andy Dalton was like, I've seen him all last year. So maybe... <laughs> And you don't know something of how to. Uh, there's there, there's some players you can watch all the tape you want. They're still gonna run you over. And Wilcon Smith, Wilcon Smith has led the league in tackles for multiple years. He just he's unstoppable. He's unstoppable. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's great. Ravens defense definitely needs that help. Um, and so Wilcon Smith definitely allows that. Um, but yeah. So in terms of the. Uh, Speaking more in terms of the game script, the dual threat quarterbacks have been giving the Saints stress, and that's what Lamar Jackson is, is a dual threat quarterback. Guys like uh, Kyler Murray, who the Saints lost to, uh, Mariota, which was a close game, and uh, they ended up came, coming out with the W in that game, but that was also tough for them as well. So it's going to be a, a tough matchup for the Saints, whether or not we'll see that same defense that we saw last week. We'll find out. if it Was it the Saints defense? Was it the Raiders offense? You know, this is the game to find out uh, if that defense is for real. And last but not least, Deshaun Jackson. Uh, he moved up from the practice squad uh, for the Ravens, so we may see a Deshaun Jackson sighting um, this week. I'm not going to start him, but you know it'll be interesting to see you know old guy Jackson see if he can get yeah. some deep bombs from Lamar Jackson. Yeah, we all love a nice Deshaun Jackson feel good story. Welcome back to the league, brother. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see what he does. I mean, they do. If there's a team that needs receivers, there's like you know a handful. There's like three or four teams that really need receivers, but this is one of them by far. Right? They just lost mm -hmm. their Number one weapon, which is their tight end. Um, I'm, I'm calling it a loss. I don't think he's going to play, but I don't know. Um, and um, they lost Bateman. You know, they've been struggling at that position even before they lost Bateman. Um, there's just not a lot of inconsistencies. Robinson, do you trust Robinson? Not really. So any help is needed. Um, if you're in the 20, 20 team league, then maybe Deshaun Jackson could be started. But right now it's a speculative ad. Um, he's, too, he's too injury prone to be worthwhile long term. But, um, you know, maybe revenge games, you can start them. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, let's see what he does. I think, I think any help is appreciated by the Ravens, and he's definitely going to be a help. All right, Chauvet, look at us. Who would have thought, bro? Who would have thought? Not we made I. it to the end. <laughs> we made it to the end. Everybody that's out there listening, I know you guys missed the smooth, sexy voice of Sweetheart. Our baby goat, we're missing him tremendously. We'll have him next week. He's not hes not dead or anything. He'll, he'll be back. He'll be back. He just had some other pr prior uh, engagements that he had to um, take a part of. Um, so he'll be back. Uh, but thanks for listening to us. Thanks for listening. That's it for this week. Episode 83 comes to a close. Um, this video will be up soon. So don't forget to find it. Um, it's on our social media pages, on our Instagram, Twitter, um, YouTube, all the uh, – podcast platforms our link is on our instagram just go to the only playbook and we have a link tree all nice and beautiful up there click on it it'll lead you to all the rest of the links 
So check us out. Don't forget to follow. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe and engage with us in those things. And uh, we're going to start talking about your questions that you ask us on social media on here. So yeah, then you can talk to your friends about how you made your own podcast. Um, so yeah, that's it, guys. Don't forget to do all of that. It was nice talking to you guys. And we will be back again in a few days for our next episode of The Only Playbook.